Hello, biology students. We're going to now talk about meiosis, sometimes called meiosis, but I'm going to pronounce it meiosis. Let's learn about it. Well, before we can really learn about it, we got to review mitosis, because if we don't understand that, we're going to be really confused. Remember, mitosis produced two identical body cells. Body meaning something like skin or stomach or nose cell. All right. We also call body this fancy word somatic. Say it, somatic. So here's an example. Human skin cells contain 46 chromosomes. In the process of mitosis, I'm going to make two identical body or somatic skin cells also with 46 chromosomes. The important part here is that I'm making identical cells. All right. So that's really important for understanding mitosis. In comparison, meiosis will be a little different. We have to also learn a couple new vocabulary words before we can jump into meiosis. The first one is diploid chromosomes. Diploid means I have two copies, that prefix di meaning two, of every type of chromosome. Humans, the diploid number is 46. All right, we have 23 copies from mom and 23 copies of a chromosome from dad. All right, so 23 chromosomes and they might be different sizes and shapes with different types of genes on them and they each have a matching copy from dad so for instance here I have a big chromosome and a, another big chromosome one would be a mommy one and one would be a daddy one a little chromosome and a little chromosome one's a mommy one and one's a daddy one now in the process of interphase I do copy chromosomes. When I say I copy them, I go from looking like this kind of stick-like shape to this butterfly-like shape. These are double or replicated chromosomes. Remember, we learned earlier that those are called sister chromatids, and they're connected by a centromere. That's a review. If that doesn't make sense, make sure you're asking for help. But in general, this is a simplified image because really, there's 46 chromosomes, but if I drew them all, it would be very overwhelming. We also then can refer to the fact that they're in pairs by calling the chromosomes homologous. Try saying it, homologous. It has the prefix homo, which means same. So homologous chromosomes have the same traits arranged in the same order. So these two chromosomes here, They've already been replicated. That's why they look like X's and have a centromere and sister chromatids. They are homologous because the copy from mom and the copy from dad have the same exact traits on them. Maybe these both have eye color and also hair color on them, but they both have that information on them to pass on to the offspring. So that part's really important because the chromosomes like to pair up in this new thing called meiosis based on similar size, shape, and traits. Well, copy from mom likes to hang out with the copy from dad. Well, in meiosis, we have to really think about why can't we just still keep doing mitosis? Well, if meiosis did not occur, when I'm trying to make a new organism through the process of sexual reproduction and fertilization, which means I'm combining a sperm and an egg. If I didn't have meiosis, each of these things would have 46 chromosomes. And when they combine during fertilization, my new cell would have 92. The new cell after fertilization is always called a zygote, which is a super weird word. But have I ever heard or been saying that human cells have 92 chromosomes? No way, that sounds like too much. That's bad. This is not something that could survive as a human cell. So somehow I have to get the end cell to be 46. So what should I do to the number of chromosomes for sperm and egg so that the end zygote has 46? Aha! If I make meiosis a process which is good at halving the normal number of chromosomes, I can half the normal number to be 23 for the egg, half the normal number to be 23 for the sperm, so that when those two things combine, they make a body cell, a zygote, that's the normal amount. So we call these special cells with half 
sex cells. Sperm and egg are super weird. They're made through the process of meiosis because they have half the normal amount. We call that half the normal number of chromosomes in sex cells, also called gametes, haploid. So this is only going to happen for things that are sperm and egg. It doesn't happen to any sort of body cell. And each of them is only going to get one copy of the homologous pair. Maybe they're going to get mom's copy or dad's copy, but they only get one copy. So they get half the normal or diploid number of chromosomes. So for humans, our normal number is 46. For this, then, half would be 23. So again, remember, diploid, remember, looked like this, where I had a copy from mom and a copy from dad, a copy from mom and a copy from dad. Notice for haploid, I only have one. I only have one. It's half. Great job.